If you like this video, why not subscribe? Good morning, everybody from around the world or in the States. It's the weekly recap Q&A show. That's the show where I sit in my car and talk about questions that have appeared on uh, YouTube and through email, and I try and answer them for you. Also below in the description, you might notice there are some useful links. Those have accumulated on Facebook and Twitter, and I want to uh, share them with you now. So if you're not interested in anything I have to say, you can always look below because there's lots of things of interest there. Probably a lot more interesting than what I'm going to tell you. So I'm shooting this uh, show in my car because it's easy and quick. I don't have a lot of time to do this. And the acoustics are pretty good, except that I usually end up in a parking lot and someone pulls up next to me blaring their radio, which they're doing right now. Uh, so any, at any rate, uh, let's go ahead and start. Last week I actually forgot to ask everybody a question, so I ended up just putting it in the description above. The question was, did you miss this show? Uh, it seems like uh, when I stopped doing it, not many people said anything, but once I said something about it, lots of people said they did, so I'm going to try and keep doing it. I just don't have a lot of time to do it, so I'm doing it now, and uh, hopefully it'll move into a more suitable environment in the near future. At any rate, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I don't want to drone on forever, so the first question I have is from Ron White. Um, Ron says, I wanted to know what your thoughts were on using lens hoods on your camera and what type to use, for example, round, pedal, or rectangular, and how to use them correctly. I don't want to have one just for looks. Well, lens hoods are uh, pretty important. Um, I've actually used a couple, well, actually I've used three. I've used the round, the the pedal, rose, the rose pedal, the pedal, flower pedal shape uh, and the rectangular ones and the pedal and the rectangular ones seem to have the most use for me as far as video goes because they, if you use a round one I discovered um, that if you use anything besides your standard or if you, if you go wide at all and try to use a round um, lens hood it will show up in the widescreen which of course then that doesn't help so uh, but the pedal shape or the rectangular ones do much better with widescreen, and their main purpose uh, is to stop flares. Um, so, and they do that pretty well. I mean, unless you're at an extreme angle and flares are still getting in, in which case some people use, you know, matte boxes, which are more expensive, but they have uh, bigger flags on top and the side to help with that kind of thing. Uh, so that's what I recommend: rectangular or pedal, uh, and they are pretty cheap on eBay. Just look at your whatever your thread size is on your lens. Look that up. Um, like like 58 millimeter lens hood, for example, and they'll show up pretty cheaply, two to three bucks. So that's what I would say, Ron. Um, next up, we have a question from Yehuda. He says, or she, assuming it's a he, probably shouldn't. Uh, in your light stand video, you were using PVC pipe. Is it better to use a one inch pipe? It's in the PVC in the uh, light stand video, which is. Uh, building those light stands are built out of three-quarter inch pipe um, would I use one inch pipe well the thing about uh, PVC is that even though it seems lightweight uh, the, the larger diameter you get on that stuff the heavier it gets like a, I have a bag of PVC light stands and it thing is heavy so but three-quarter inch seems to be the minimum uh, kind of balance between size and sturdiness so I think that's a better size than one inch. However, if you're going to, you know, the higher you go, if you're going to do something that uh, you need the extra stability for, I don't know if actually increasing the diameter of the pipe is as good as putting another leg on it, like I showed you in the video. So, you know, maybe if you, if you can get one inch pipe, if that's the only kind you can get, you know, then, then use that. But I would re recommend three quarter inch as far as the light stands go. But you can really use any size. Um, I don't think, I don't, although I went away from half inch on those stands, on the specific project, because I didn't think it would be as sturdy, it's a little too flimsy, but it comes in handy on other projects, so that's what I would suggest, three quarter inch for the light stands. Uh, Kurt Hathaway asks me, uh, I've been looking for this piece on eBay, but honestly I don't know what to call it, it's the, that quarter inch screw with a big plastic screw handle thing on it, Let's see, oh, and I actually have one right here, Kurt's talking about in the, uh, the crane video, the frugal crane, I used this on the bottom of the uh, camera platform in order to attach the camera. It's basically a quarter twenty screw surrounded by this fancy knob. And I actually got this from something else, and I can't even remember what it was now, and just cut the thread down. But if you go to your hardware store um, and go to your nuts and bolts aisle, they usually have these specialty drawers, like Home Depot, Lowe's, just uh, kind of specialty parts. 
and you'll find quarter inch threaded uh, quarter inch thread with these various knobs on it. Some are knurled knobs, some are these triangular things. Uh, but that's where I've seen them before. And if they don't have a thread like this, they'll have a um, kind of a internal thread where there's a hole with a thread in it, opposed to this just having a thread outside the knob. So you could just if you can find those, then you can just put a quarter inch thread into the hole, secure it with uh, epoxy or um, Loctite or something like that and then just cut it down. So that'll do the same thing. But those knobs are out there in your hardware store. You just kind of have to look for them uh, on your nuts and bolts aisle. Well, that's where I got mine. That's, uh, I didn't get mine there, but if I had to get another one, that's where I would go to get it. Because I just had mine laying around in a parts bin or something. Alright, and finally, <coughs> Christopher Bumbarger, <coughs> Bumbarger says, I recently came into a Canon GL2 mini DV camcorder and at the same time have been thinking about doing some filmmaking. Is this camcorder still up to par now that HD has come around and I see HD camcorders on every corner? Um, I would really like to know if an upgrade is in order or if I can shoot good quality video with, with this since it's three CCDs and selling, still selling for hefty prices. Um, well, first of all, I want to say that you can do make good videos with any kind of camera you happen to have. Um, I mean, even something like a cell phone camera, you know, if you use good technique, you can have good output. Now, if you're concerned about high def, like I prefer to have high def video because I just want the best possible quality when I upload stuff on YouTube and high def it looks better than standard def, but the GL2 is a good camcorder. It's a good camera. It has a good lens on it. It uh, shoots in widescreen. Um, <clears throat> it does shoot on tape, however, which I don't like um, anymore because I had shot on tape for a long time and the whole capturing process and possibility of dropping frames and all that. Um, you're dealing with a medium that's going to wear out. I, I much prefer to shoot right, right to a card. That's much nicer and I don't regret ever leaving Mini DV. It's an obsolete technology, but um, it's a good camera. I mean, if you, if you have access to any good camera, especially one that has, for example, a good piece of glass on the front, that's a good lens, um, use it. You can always, you know, shoot some test footage, put something together, upload it, you know, if you don't like the result because of the camera itself for whatever reason, you can always, you know, change cameras. So, but if you have access to something like that, it has a, you know, good zoom lens, I believe it has actually a rocker zoom on it, opposed to like the little button or the little teeny rocker, it actually has like a, you know, two finger zoom. Um, that's nice. So, take advantage of it. You know, I have all kinds of different cameras now. I mean, I've got the, uh, you know, the cell phone camera that I've never used but I want to and I have the uh, Sanyo Xacti CG10 that I shoot this show with it's a little pistol grip camera that has a pretty decent image um, then I have my Canon uh, HFS100 that I use for all my tutorial stuff still because uh, I can just let it run and run and run and it won't overheat unlike my Sony NEX 5N which is my newest camera that I really really like because I can put uh, old lenses on it different kinds of lenses for different looks but it does have an overheating issue, so it's not for event videography. Uh, like, if I wanted to shoot a wedding and it ran for 40 minutes, that camera would overheat. But I have the Canon camcorder, which won't. So there's all kinds of uses for different cameras. I don't know if there's an end-all, be-all camera out there, even. Um, but I like the ones that I've accumulated. But, you know, use your GH2, check it out. In fact, this leads to the question I was going to ask everybody this week, which is above the title, the title of today's episode is uh, what are you doing with your old cameras? Uh, I know that you know we all like to upgrade, but there's the older cameras still have uses, and so I was wondering you know, what everybody else does with their cameras they've upgraded from. I mean, do you just give them away? Do you, you know, use them for a webcam, for example? Do you, like for this show, I don't think I'll ever change using the Sanyo Xacti for this show because it's just quick and easy, shoots in MP4 format, easy to upload, um, won't overheat etc etc so you tell please tell me what you're doing leave a comment below tell me what you're doing with your old cameras that you have, you have upgraded from that's basically sh the show today remember uh to check out the frugal filmmaker facebook group there's lots of activity going on there i think we're about to hit 5,000 members so if you have a question or some advice or you, you have information you want to share with people you have a video you want them to look at and give you critique of you have a great deal you found on the internet, you know, that's a great place to share that. Lots of people are active in that group. It's become its own entity, so that's a good place to go. Twitter, at Frugal Filmmaker, if you want to follow my tweets. Once in a while I have something interesting to say on Twitter, I'm trying to make that a little more active. Um, there's the, bra the, the blog, thefrugalfilmmaker.com, 
And of course, here is the YouTube channel where you're watching this. So again, check the uh, links below for more interesting information. And uh, this show is over.